Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out Grim Mind. This is a horror physics based platform puzzle game and I know we've had a lot of platform puzzle type things on the show but this one looked pretty exceptionally cool to me and definitely seemed worth a look uh, if only for the uh, interesting art style and I'll have some some interesting criticisms to go over when we get into the game on this one. I do want to just get all of the you know, preliminary purchase information uh, right off the top of the video. So this one is available right now uh, as a either a demo you can grab to try it out, or you can pick up the full version, which is going to be available in the description, the link to it, I mean. And it's also available on uh, Greenlight, and there's going to be a link to vote on this one as well. So if you like what you see when we play this, please follow the link through and go give it a vote on Greenlight. That is a really good way to help out a developer who is just getting started in the indie world. So let's not linger too much, so I know you guys hate when I do that. I do want to show you the options menu just very briefly. We've got a brightness setting, language, English, or Polish, full screen. Well, I have this set the way I have it set for recording reasons. And uh, that is really it on that front. Then our credits. And I do want to mention I am playing this in the optimal developer recommended uh, situation, which is to have a dark room, headphones on, and uh, generally be you know prepared for what might be a scary experience. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. I don't know. I, I, to be honest with you, before we even get started, I feel like I need to just mention, like, the graphic style seems to be a little bit at odds with uh, what I think is to be generally, like, a horror-heavy marketing pitch. I'm not saying that conclusively, because, you know, I still haven't tried the game, and we're about to get into that right now, so I don't want to go, you know, too far, but I feel like that isn't quite meshing for me yet. But I, I need to see what's up, so let's just start a new game. Maybe it's going to be terrifying. I hear the premise, though, has something to do with amnesia. And that always scares me. Emptiness everywhere. How does emptiness taste like? No happiness, apparently. Uh, no pain. I seem to be able to look around. No hope. It's pretty light. Cold. It's freezing. Wait. Me? Who am I? Am I alive? I feel something. You can sort of hear the change in my voice. Something weird uh, as I'm noticing that we're getting slightly into cliche territory when it comes to opening monologue here. I have a an aversion to games that use amnesia as a main gameplay element and I, I know I'm probably not the only one but it just seems so worn out like I mean yeah we get it like you don't know who you are or where you are and that's a pretty good framework for starting out on an adventure because it means that you can develop the character from a blank slate but it also means you kinda don't have to do a lot of the legwork when it comes to developing the character it, it, there's no conflicts, there's no challenges. Well, I don't know, there are a few, but it's not quite as hard. So we're in this little, oh, little cave here, uh, and it's telling us to move around. Oh, I can knock through that wall, apparently. So the first thing that comes to mind when I see this character is the Gorons from Legend of Zelda, uh, combined with those little walking hedgehog head guys from Braid. Not sure if they ever got a name or what, but, uh, kind of weird. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this game. There's another one called And Yet It Moves, which is like a paper craft uh, platform puzzler. And I think there's a little bit of that kind of an influence going on, as well as, of course, I have to mention Limbo, uh, if only for the silhouette aspect, and maybe, uh, what's it called? The new one, uh, Knit Underground? I think it's got a pretty similar aesthetic going on. I think this actually may have been around before that one was ready to go. I don't know, I could be wrong on that, so I probably shouldn't comment. Um, so I'm looking at what we're doing here for effects, and yeah, there's definitely that uh, depth of field effect that's kind of interesting. It's definitely reminding me of Limbo, though. And then we've got a whole physics element, which is, of course, a la Trine, or, you know, any number of other platformers that have used physics. In fact, even Limbo itself used physics. And we're using the WASD, as you can see by the text above us. We can grab objects by holding the left mouse button and throw by clicking right. Simple enough. Ah, he's got quite an arm on him. Pretty cool lighting system, I guess. Uh, the 
I mean, I guess it's fairly typical at this point that you see something like that with the... Would you call it ray traced? I don't know if that's the right word for it, but there's a projected shadow uh, which moves dynamically with the solid objects. Uh, tip in the same way as the boxes you can catch ropes and travel in the air. Simply hold left mouse button and jump. I kind of... Well, I guess I figured that was the case. I don't know if I like the look of this character. Something about him just sort of looks... Like, it doesn't quite mesh with the rest of the environment. It looks... Unfinished, I guess? I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Oh, got some water down here or something. Got a deformation going on on the water surface. I believe it's dynamic. Kind of hard to tell, though. I'm not sure if it's moving because I'm hitting it or because it was going to move anyway. I can actually go under here. I guess that's in case I fall down again. You know, from that side of the platform. And uh, again, pardon me for judging, like, the level of horror from before I even started the game. That was kind of a ridiculous thing to do, but I was really just going off of the art style entirely. Uh, and I just, I don't know if I feel like I can be that scared by something that looks kind of silly and cute like that. But again, different strokes for different folks, and I am uh, not here to tell you what you think. I'm just here to present you with my own perspective and to let you know how that fits into the framework of what you might think. And really, it's the dialogue and it's the dissonance between our opinions that makes for the, the most interesting assertions, I believe. That's where the meat of the dialogue lies. So, um, I'm really trying here to get a good bit of momentum. Maybe I need to be up a little higher in the... Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, I didn't expect this thing to shift as well. Whoa, that's... Oh, that sucks. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to click... I'm not used to uh, platformers that I have to control with WASD. It's becoming a thing now, I guess. Alright, this really isn't that hard. I was just screwing it up. There we go. Yeah, I know you guys hate when I linger too long in any particular one section of the game, and I, I don't entirely blame you for that. So I will try to keep things moving when I can, but sometimes I do like to pause the game action just a little bit so I can you know, commentate on a larger point without having to be interrupted by the game, because there's one thing that I hate. I wouldn't say more than anything, but it's one of my biggest, like, YouTube uh, things that bugs me is... and I know that's a silly way to phrase it, but when people start a point and immediately get diverted away from their point and then come back to it way later, like after they've gone on three other tangential stories, and I know I've done it myself, but that's just one of those things that, like, a pet peeve that I really want to work on not doing so much. I don't know if you guys are as bugged by it as I am, but it can definitely turn me off to somebody's commentary when it feels like they just can't finish a single point. I remember you can throw carried objects by clicking right mouse button. Well, I know. Oop. No, no, grab it. Thank you. Lighting is very severe, I have to say. I mean, this amount of a shadow from this box, well, I guess makes sense. I mean, it just seems like it's trying to be really stylized, but at the same time, it's really sort of relying on just everything being black a lot, you know, as far as the foreground. And then the background is just sort of a textural thing going on. Uh, but again, I really don't want to be too harsh, because... Oh, jeez, now what have I done? We're still right at the beginning. I have to say, though, the sound effects, uh, the ambience, the atmosphere, that all, all feels top-notch to me. I have no issues there. And uh, really, actually, I should probably say that despite these little silly criticisms, like, the main thrust behind this game, I think, is actually probably quite positive. Um, this is the type of thing that I actually usually do get really into myself. I, I do like a lot of puzzle platformers. If you've watched the show on a regular basis, you'll know I cover them pretty regularly. Uh, and a lot of the time, they're pretty formulaic, yet somehow I still seem to come away from the game with something. And when you add physics, well, there's always opportunities for hijinks and tomfoolery and all that. Oh, seriously? Come on. I'm really not trying to throw it that hard, but there's no way to regulate what level of... Oh, wow. Velocity you're gonna get. So I should note, uh, I am playing the full version. This has 15 chapters to it. Seriously? No, just put it down, man. Just let it go. There we go. Jump. He's got an issue where, uh, I guess, the weight of the box, like the mass underneath it, is not sufficient enough to stop friction from his feet from sliding it. 
I kind of think that's a little annoying, but I guess it's not a deal breaker either. Sorry that took me an incredibly long time to open. Why? why? There's a very serious sound happening. And I don't believe there's anything all that serious going to happen. Although, if you really want to screw with my head, this would be a pretty good moment. It's very dark. Hey, colored lighting is nice. And I should say, like, the amnesia angle I know is sort of beating that up a little bit a moment ago, but there are still ways to frame it if you do it really skillfully. It's just a lot of times, and I'm really not de accusing this developer because I don't know yet, and most likely this is not the case, but a lot of times they really do just ride that concept. I don't get what I'm supposed to... Okay, so I used the weight of myself running onto it to slide the thing back and forth. But yeah, they just ride that concept of it being... You don't know this, so, you know, everything's up for grabs. Just go wherever you want, story-wise. It is so dark in there. Oh, there are secrets, by the way. You probably saw that. I think I died. Why? I'm not sure. Uh, that was one of the tips, also, when the game was starting up. Like, try not to die and have fun. And it said fun, fun in quotation marks, which seems like... Okay, I guess we're at the point where platforming starts to kick in. Seems like you should never have to say, like, have fun in quotation marks. You should just have fun. Okay, so now we're going to hit on a point that I used to cover quite a bit in Super Meat Boy levels when I would play them on Super Meat World, because I actually did, like, a Let's Play Super Meat World series on the channel for a while, uh, where I would just play random people's uploaded levels, and a pretty common complaint I had was that the, the background and the foreground were not sufficiently differentiated in shading. And what that would result in... Ooh, a shiny stone. Uh, it would result in an issue where you really just couldn't see what was accessible, what was supposed to be a platform, or really anything like that at all. Uh, this is a case where I guess there's a trope behind it. We're using this stone, so it's a little bit more forgivable. But a moment ago, like, with these heavy shadows, there's no way to see what foreground and background are. I know I could turn the brightness up, and in fact, I probably would do that. I just don't want to now mess with the levels that we've got set up. So in this case, we're going to do like in, what is it, Gears of War, where they had a moment where... Oh, those are spikes. I'm dead. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go get that stone again. So we're going to have to run around through some dark hallways with a light source, which is fine with me. We can do this. Uh, I should also mention that there's a... An interesting element to the jumping. Holding down spacebar to jump will result in a an instantaneous jump, uh, which is as opposed to a jump where you hit spacebar when you land, you, you're not hold, uh, still holding it, and then you press it again. That's like a few frames long enough for it to shift your momentum in such a way that you would now be killed if the platform was about to give out from under you. Hopefully you know what I mean, it's more like a feeling than it is an actual thing to describe. And I'm a little frustrated by how we're handling these shadows, because I don't know if that feels right. I just can't see these edges. I mean, everything's got these weird tessellated, feathered, like, plant bits all over it, so I can't really see what I can step on and what I can't. And then we're throwing shadows on top of it, so there's so little of the game that's actually visible at a given moment. Oh, my shiny stone. Alright, well, it rolled away. I guess I can climb on these vines, hopefully. Yep, that is the case. So you gotta make sure you hold down left click, and every time you jump, as long as you're holding left click, you're gonna still grab those. Oh, look at that, pretty ball. I'm not gonna make, yeah, oh, I am actually, but it doesn't matter, because I thought I was supposed to be grabbing that vine. The reality of the situation was that I was, oh, I can't hold both. I was actually just landing on that thing. It's kind of interesting thinking about the differences between a platformer like this and a platformer that you play primarily with a D-pad. Uh, wow. Okay, I didn't mean to jump there. This fluid smells bad. It looks bad. Seriously. Uh, yeah, you play a game pretty differently when you have a pointer that you're leading around instead of just the usual... You know, you're focused on controlling the character from, like, a first-person perspective instead of a third-person, and I'm using that in a different way than normal. Uh, in this case, we're talking about how the controls are shifted. 
Uh, first person being where you assume the role of the character, and third person meaning like you're the character watching over the character you're controlling on the screen. And I know you're doing that in both cases, but hopefully you can see the difference I'm trying to present here. You know, if you were to contrast this with something like Super Meat Boy, where you're controlling the character absolutely directly, there is a bit of a difference there. I feel like I'm going to have to watch out for a worm that's going to embed itself in my head, and then I'm going to have to run left and right a while. It is nice seeing a, a derivation of something like Limbo, though, with some color. Although I actually thought Limbo's aesthetic was really pretty. That is one of the games that I did finish entirely, and I, uh, I would have covered it on the show had I not played it all the way through on Xbox Live already. In fact, I mean, if it ever ended up being, you know, a dollar or something, maybe I'd still get it again just to cover it on the show, because I think it was quite exceptional. Uh, the sense of atmosphere in that game was seriously, like, tense and thick. And it was very well done. I'm still... I'm not totally feeling this character, like, I don't even know what he's supposed to be. He looks sort of like a bean. And I, I hate to say it, but, like, I make, you know, I guess... All of us, to some degree, make judgments on, like, certain character tropes, and if we don't entirely get... I'm, I'm probably speaking for too many of you here, I know this is probably not the case with everybody, but if you don't get into the look of your character, sometimes it can... It can be a barrier to entry, let's put it that way. Uh, so I should mention also... Oh, right, I can throw these with right-click, I could probably knock this thing down. I should mention that the uh, website was pretty explicit in saying that there are very challenging logic puzzles in this game, which I actually think is pretty cool. And that, if anything, will be probably one of the bigger deciding factors about the overall quality in this game. So I feel like it's going to be a little bit doing a disservice to the game to show it from just the beginning. Uh, so this might be the type of game that would be pretty well suited to be playing a little bit more of, or at least, at the very least, playing a longer episode. Provided my commentary can keep going for long enough, and also provided I don't end up getting stuck on one of these puzzles, because I don't know if you guys have ever noticed... But pretty much every time I do a puzzle game on the show, I do some sort of stupid thing that you guys gotta call me out for in the comments for quite a while. And I always feel so bad. There's just this thing about trying to commentate and think at the same time. It's tougher than you think, man. If you haven't tried it, you should try it once, just to see what it's like. You know, go play a puzzle game, and then try to talk to yourself in a meaningful and useful way the whole time. It's tough. I think what I need to do is drag all these bits of moss up here so I can build a little uh, step ladder, and then I can jump over to that jewel or whatever you want to call it, the shiny orb. But to elaborate on that previous point just a little further, just the very act of being able to commentate for long periods of time nearly uninterrupted is harder than it sounds. Um, I, you always have this running dialogue through your head generally. But being able to tap into it, and then also being able to sort of filter through the important bits that are actually worth saying, well, it's an acquired talent, and I'm not saying that I'm talented at it, but I feel like I've definitely gotten better since I started, no question there. Oh, maybe now I can jump... no. I was thinking maybe I could jump high enough to uh, reach one of those vines. Wasn't there another bit? Yeah, there's another bit of moss, maybe I can use that as a ramp. Ramp, so to speak, in fact. Uh, let's see if we can just pop that at the edge there and then use that to jump off of. Pretty sure this is how we're going to do this. I'd be sort of surprised if this isn't it. And if this does still doesn't work... Pardon my crap, jump there, it didn't actually activate. There we go. If that still doesn't work, then I could always just try stacking them a little bit higher. Really? That's not it, huh? Maybe the vines are the goal, in fact? Uh, I don't know, let's... See what we can do here. Let's take this, shift it over, let's take this, shift it over, stack it up, pack it up, and put it in a bag. Uh, like cinnamon? We'll get it real fast. Okay, I'm not seeing what to do with this. There's not another bit of moss here that I can see. Is this one? Yes. So this would be less a logic puzzle and more a situational awareness puzzle. I believe there's even another one here. So you're going to learn how to differentiate between objects with a slightly tighter uh, graphic mask around them versus the foreground objects, which are a little bit blurrier. That is one thing I have to say that's a... I hate to even do this because it feels sort of like a low blow, but the quality of the background images looks a little bit fuzzy to me. 
I, I mean, maybe that was stylistically more of an option than anything else, but it just looks a little bit like they need to be a little uh, higher res. Okay, so there we go. Now we can reach these vines. Now what is that going to do for me, though? Don't I need a destination after I... Oh, it opens up. Who'd have thought? So sometimes when you clear an area and then you proceed into a darker area, it actually just seems to kill you. Uh, this time, for whatever reason, it actually just proceeds forward. So I guess that was a puzzle. I mean, like I said, more of a situational awareness type thing. I'm going to guess, what was that, the end of chapter one? Dark again. <laughs> Crap. I do like the use of colored lighting and the great sound effects. The sound effects have definitely been the strong point so far. Yeah, it's that sound when you take the ground meat and you, you know, make meatballs and, like, turn it around with your hands. Yeah, that's what that is. Uh-oh. You're being watched by, what is it, Ogmo? Oh, Jesus. Well, I wasn't expecting squares to attack me. Uh, having played a lot of Super Meat Boy myself, uh, that was not so scary as it was just like, what? <laughs> oh, I'm glad I don't have to follow through that again. I guess we're just gonna run for our lives here. I don't know what these things are or why they're trying to kill me, which makes it a little less scary, actually. Uh, because they're not succeeding at being scary just by the sheer virtue of how they look. I mean, they're basically just a bunch of boxes. And it almost seems a little bit confusing, like, the art style for the backgrounds and the art style for the general presentation seems much more refined. Yeah, you can't walk there, can you? Because you're evil, dark creatures or something. And that just sealed off immediately. I don't know what these creatures are. They seem to like to mirror whatever moves I make, though. Yeah, we're gonna meet them again, though. You know they are. You know we are. I don't know, maybe I'm kind of cynical, but, like, the hearing your heart beat in your ear and having lights flashing and creepy sounds stuff, like, it doesn't scare me that much. I mean, maybe I'm... Oh, okay. Well, I grabbed the edge, so that wasn't so bad. I guess what seems like more the case is if you were... And I really don't mean this to be a negative thing or, like, to be rude or anything, but I think if you were a younger age group, you know, and, like, the... 8 to 12 sort of age group, I think you'd probably find this scarier. I'm falling. Falling into unknown. Um, and I guess it's just because I've played so many games, I've seen so many really horrible things, like, not that I've wanted to see, but like, hey, if you've ever gone to uh, r slash WTF, even by accident, uh, spend five minutes there and you'll scar yourself for life. And as a proud Redditor, um, well... <laughs> Not so proud of that subreddit per se, but yeah, I've, I've been there. And I'm just saying that to sort of let you know that I would say I'm a, a bit on the far out angle of seeing crazy things. So if you're someone who's not been exposed to so much uh, just absolute, like, malevolent creepiness, uh, you'll probably find this a little bit creepier than it is coming across to me in my commentary. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. Definitely digging the ambient lighting here. I think that definitely sets the atmosphere a lot better. Uh, that The background being the focus in the previous area seemed like it wasn't really doing justice. See, like, look at this area with these... I don't know what you want to call these, uh, bits of foliage. Oh, I think I'm probably going to drown or something. Uh, yeah, they're, they're really blurry, actually. Like, they really need to be tightened up on the resolution department. And you can see them in contrast just versus these right here, which are much tighter looking. Uh, I mean, you could say it's because of depth of field, because if you look at this in the foreground, obviously, uh, yeah, that's going to be blurry as hell, and that's fine. That's entirely acceptable. Uh, but that's because it's a depth of field effect. When it's right here, I don't feel like it is. There's no parallaxing going on, at least as far as I can tell. It looks like it's just part of the same level of detail that should be going on with these little bits of ivy or whatever these are. And I guess it's just a, an inherent need to understand the environments that our characters go through, but it, it just comes across sort of frustrating. I feel like the, uh, the developer mapped these environments by just taking, you know, vector edges, mapping out a few vertices, and then covering up the points with bits of foliage. And uh, again, really, really not trying to sound 
too uh, overly critical, but trying to provide a, a bit of an insight to it from my perspective, and I could in be entirely wrong on that, that assertion I just made. But I guess maybe, you know, not every art style is for every person, so this one may not be my favorite. But regardless, I think the nuts and bolts of the gameplay, that is something that I'm into, and especially the fact that there's some secrets to find. Uh, the more intellectual, difficult puzzles, and I know we probably haven't seen any really yet, but I have a feeling they're in here. Um, I have to say, like, I was stumped on Limbo for a while. Ha! Secret unreachable place. Is that what denotes a secret unreachable place, that it is pink? It's actually quite reachable, because I just reached it. Whatever. Let's jump over here. Is this unreachable, too? No. Just blue over here. Oh, we got a lever. Yeah, that was a really hard-to-notice lever. You probably... I mean, I get that you put that spotlight on it, but, like, make the lever flash white and black or something. That's what I would have done anyway. A lot of times, you really gotta beat the game player over the head, or the player over the head with these types of things. Uh, so if I was to make a criticism, like, what's the quickest way you could make this game seem a little bit more accessible, I think it really comes a lot from this, uh, the silhouetted black edges to all of the level design thing. I don't know, it doesn't feel like art style so much as it feels like just a method, a conveyance method, uh, for the levels to be built around. What's going on with this? Oh, we've got some rocks, and then we gotta keep going over here when I start to drown. Doesn't appear to be a really obvious meter. You just start to hear him doing his, like, Sonic the Hedgehog gulp, gulp, gulp thing. Kind of a horrible sound if you think about it, because it's the sound of someone drinking water. And, uh, if you're ever underwater and you start drinking water, you're not gonna be too happy about that. So this isn't really the most... <laughs> Uh, effective puzzle here. I mean, we've got a situation where really the only reason we're having a hard time is because it's kind of hard to control these physics-enabled objects. And we're gonna head through. I think we've made a sufficient hole. Yes, we have. And now we can get our way out. I always think it's sort of a double-edged sword doing the whole you drown when you're underwater thing, and I know that's kind of like an obvious uh, just mechanic for a game if you have water. You know, your guy's probably going to be able to drown in it, because as living organisms, we understand that we need oxygen. Uh, but in a game, you know, you can do pretty much anything. And I believe these are now keys I need to carry across, some sort of thing like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, in general, it... Oh, and what's that? I don't know, let's drop that in there. Oh! Okay, that actually... <laughs> that scared me for a second, just because I didn't even expect that there would be anything happening at that point. Figured, hey, let's go drop this yellow key, let's get another key, and things are going to be just fine. I'm going to guess they probably can't go in the water or maybe over to that... That other, uh... Oh! That one spawned on top of me. Well, and uh, I must apologize because, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to work on my not going off on weird tangents thing, and I went and just did it a second ago when I was talking about the water. I think I know what I'm supposed to do here. I gotta go up on top of that, approach it from above... Oh! If I can reach, though. I'm actually using the jewel or whatever it is to hold me up right now, which I'm not sure if that's what was supposed to happen. Uh, I was figuring go up to the bridge and drop it, but I think the bridge actually connects all the way across, so that's not going to be possible. Yeah, it looks like some kind of chambers. What if I drop the yellow one and the red one? What is that going to do for me? Not much. It's like a key in Little Big Planet. Can I set this so it rolls into the goal? That would probably make my life a little bit easier. There we go. Nope. Um, if it hasn't become somewhat clear, the character is not exactly the most mobile character I've ever controlled. I mean, he's not really exactly a Super Meat Boy type of guy. Uh, so when you get a situation where these guys, I mean, they like home in on you. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it seems like I'm not really in a position where I even have a chance. I would guess, if I had to guess, that probably what I need to do is set this up so I need to throw this with enough distance or enough momentum that I'm quite far away and then they actually can't probably cross this gap or something like that. I don't know what they're even doing, they're not even following me. Oh, now I can easily reach this, what changed? 
I think there was some behind the scenes junk that just happened there. I think he moved that platform or something. Why are I? Why why are I here? Why am I here? This place isn't safe. And we've got some more hands and spaghetti going on in the back. <laughs> Pardon my cynicism, I'm really not trying to be a jerk here. Just having a little fun. The thing is speaking directly into my mind. Your grim mind. Oh, we've got some lava. Cool. Kind of hoping we'd get to a new uh, element to gameplay here soon. What is this? Is there anything here? I can't tell. Again, I, re I really don't like the fact that I just can't tell what I can like interact with as far as floors. You know, in a game that's really driven about physics and uh, interactivity with the environment, it's like so much of it is nebulous. Can I... Oh, I guess I need to push this the other way. No? Can I pull it? Can I... Can I do anything with it? It's making a lot of rumbling. Oh. Did that help? No. Alright, this doesn't look right. Whatever I'm doing with this thing does not look right. Um... Can you... be useful, please, Switch? Apparently not. Whatever I did, it caused something to make a rumbling sound, so I'm gonna assume that I did it right. Maybe? Uh, I'm not sure there's a way to get back out now. That's interesting. Oh, is there... I think there's ivy here I can climb. Okay, well that wasn't readily obvious. I mean, the ivy it just sort of looks like black speckles, and the background also sort of looks like black speckles. So, whatever. This is what I mean. It's all so ambiguous, it's all nebulous. And I mean, it's it's succeeding on a graphical front from being somewhat ambient. I mean, I'm sort of interested in moving around and seeing what's to come still. Bridge has moved. Uh, but I'm not, like, worried about being scared. I'm not really particularly, you know, engaged on that front. Are you guys gonna die if you go in the water? Apparently not. I don't know what to do with you guys. Can you go over here, please? Maybe I can use you for something more effective. Ah. Yeah, that'll show you. They're gonna get through, I bet. How do I get- oh, there's a vine. Again, couldn't see it! And for all of you in the comments saying, just turn up your brightness, man. Um, yeah, I, I will. And, in fact, that's something I should have done, like I said, but at the same time, uh, even if the brightness is up quite a bit higher... I don't know what I'm pushing here, it looks like a bread bed frame. Um, even if the brightness is quite a bit higher, I'm still going to be presented with solid black silhouetted landscapes. So, not going to make a huge difference on that front, that battle front. Uh, what are we doing with this bed frame? I've pushed it in the way of this block that apparently is here. Beyond that, I don't know, man. Can we go in here? Maybe where the thing used to be? Doesn't look like it. I can make a nice, solid, thick thud sound. I almost could pull it for a moment. Can I? No, can't pull it. I don't know what I'm doing. Alright, let's climb back over there. Maybe I wasn't done yet. I don't know. Why did I even... Oh, can I lift it? I don't know what it even is. It's like a couple of sticks. I can't recognize it. pretty confused, to be honest with you guys, right now. I don't know <laughs> at all what I'm doing. Uh, everything's dark. And I'm not seeing a way through yet. Oh, well, maybe I'll just continue in this direction. Uh, is this another bit of stuff? Why do we need to hear this sniffling? This guy looks like a bean. Is he really... Are we supposed to be taking this this seriously? I'm starting to feel like maybe I was supposed to actually pull the bed frame in this direction. But I don't know how to do that exactly, because I believe when I reach it underneath from there, it's just going to get stuck. Because as you can tell, there's a very tall stick on the one side of it. Yeah. What have I really accomplished here? I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of sniffling. Leave it that. 
I think we're actually at a point now. Oh. Oh. What? Why? Why is this happening? Pull it. I don't know. There's a freaking branch in my way. I can't tell. My heartbeat seems to be getting more intense in my ear. Okay. You know, it's hard enough to navigate a surreal environment that doesn't really make a lot of sense when there's no references back to, like, real-world objects we can relate to. But it's a whole nother level when you can hardly even see on top of that. I mean, I'm pretty sure this was the desired effect. We wanted to not be able to see. I mean, if, if we want to do this, I guess we'll just go back to the menu just for a moment. And turn our brightness. It says the box on the screen should be barely visible. Uh, the box, honestly, is plenty visible at 1. Uh, if I go up to the highest it goes, 1.9, and then we go to continue. I also want to just know what's going to happen when I do this. Where is it going to put me? Well, everything's kind of blown out now. I mean, yeah, I can see some of the edges a little better, but as you can tell, I mean, look around. Everything is still, you know, black and silhouetted. It's not going to change the entire angle on the game. And I'm not sure that it's going to make any difference as it uh, has to do with that bed frame thing I was trying to push and pull around. So I think what I'll do is we'll wrap this episode up at this point, and I'll see if I can get myself back there. In case it's easier for you to see now, I don't know. But I have a feeling I'm still not going to be able to tell what's going on. I don't like those things. They're not scary, but they're annoying. <laughs> I may or I may not be able to even do this immediately. It's going to probably take me a couple tries again. But I think that's going to do it for Grim Mind. Uh, ending prognosis, um, I'm gonna actually say, and I know this is probably gonna seem contradictory, but I'm actually gonna say I recommend it, uh, just because I think the puzzles are actually gonna be pretty interesting as we keep going forward. I like the direction it's going in, I think there's just a lot of little nitpicks I have over it. I don't think it's a bad game, I think it's hard is definitely in the right place, uh, and I would like to see this get on Steam via Greenlight. I don't think it's, uh, the type of game that deserves to be grouped in with some of the ones that just don't even deserve acknowledgement on that. Um, it definitely stands above quite a few things I've seen. And uh, so, I, I mean, yeah, give it a vote if you think this is cool. Definitely try out the demo for yourself, see what you think about it. I know, I read this already. And I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this because this is a... Uh, I don't want to say contentious, but it's not exactly the most straightforward review I've done, or uh, impressions video I've done. I feel like I have a lot of opinions, and a lot of them are very contradictory to each other. Uh, and I, I kind of feel like I could go either way on this game, depending on how you want to frame the critique. So I am definitely curious to hear what you guys think about this one as well, and I would love to hear if you guys would play the demo, uh, what that does for you as well. So, let me know all of that info in the comments if you don't mind. I want to keep the discussion going as long as possible. I forgot, how did I get out of this again? Oh, there was a vine or something over on the right. Uh, but yeah, that's going to pretty much wrap us up for this one. Uh, as always, remember to add on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the videos, old and new. Sort them by developer distribution method. Uh, just anything that you pretty much have in your head, genre-wise. Type it in. You'll find some crazy indie games for it. Um, how did this guy get up here? I don't remember him being there before. Is that my punishment for going back? Whatever. Uh, I guess he's gonna eat me. Um, yeah, and, uh, after you're done with the website, facebook.com slash indie impressions. If you leave a like on that page, you'll get every day's new updated videos delivered right into your Facebook stream. It makes it nice and convenient for you so you don't have to come looking for them. And I also do some pretty cool community stuff over there as well. I've been running the occasional contest. Uh, if you ever want to contact me, that's another quick way to do it right through Facebook. Uh, and lastly, if you want to uh, contact me directly, you know, aside from the YouTube comments or Facebook comments, at uh, Rockley Smile on Twitter is one of the other quickest ways to do that. And I also do take p uh, PMs via Reddit, YouTube, or Twitter. So whatever you need to say to me, please do say it. I love to hear from all of you. In fact, the more the merrier. I am not one of those guys that's, uh, you know, just going to ignore you if you have something to say. There we go. I think that was a decent throw. I don't like replaying this over and over, actually. 
Uh, but, I, yeah, I, I don't think it's that hard. I'm just getting stuck for some stupid reason. But that is going to do it for another awesome episode of Indie Impressions. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you did. And please do come back again tomorrow, because I do a new episode every single day. So any feedback you have for the show is greatly appreciated. And of course, uh, if you'd like to help the show grow, the quickest and most effective thing you can do is just please let me uh, let your friends know about the show. Uh, if you're on any of the major social media networks, if you're a Redditor, anything like that, mention me a couple times. Every little bit helps, and it does make a serious appreciable difference, so... Wow, a decent dodge there before they dogpiled on me at the end. Right, so that's going to do it for Grimmind. I know that's like the fourth time I've closed out the show, but thank you so much for watching, guys, and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Have a lovely night, and take care.